than Kevin can wait on CBS is just what the doctor ordered. I had to Heimlich you. It was shrimp fed. I was tired of peeling. TV's number one new comedy. What does that smell? My candle. It smells like meatloaf. Because it's a meatloaf candle. <laughs> Proves laughter is the best medicine. Hey honey, you want breakfast? Thinking about going for a run. Okay. I thought about it. I'm going to have breakfast. Kevin James in Kevin Can Wait. CBS Monday or stream it live or on demand. Play.it presents Showtime Championship Boxing. Showtime! Three podcasts connecting you with the fighters and industry leaders. On the record with Paul Rivera. We'll cover the lifestyle of boxing behind the scenes and hopefully a viewpoint that you don't get anywhere else. From yeah. Brooklyn to the world with Polly Malinaji. Many of you know me not only as a boxer, but as a commentator, broadcaster. And The Reveal with Mark Kriegel. When you sit down with fighters more on a personal level. You give up a little piece of their soul. Download and subscribe to Showtime Championship Boxing at Play.it and iTunes. And, it's and now, Sports Radio 92.9 The Game, Haviland Express Loop Sports Flash. For specials and more, go to HavilandSportsFlash.com. I'm Justin Baker. The Braves and Reds are getting closer to wrapping up Game 1 of a three-game weekend series in the Tri-State area tonight. Atlanta, who entered the game 2-4 for four on their current road trip, currently leads 2 to nothing, and it's Atlanta right now batting in the top half of the eighth, looking for some insurance runs with runners at first and third. And two out in the inning. Dansby Swanson with a solo home run back in the fifth. That was his fifth home run of the year. In soccer, Atlanta United back on the road this week. And they face Vancouver tomorrow night. And team captain Michael Parkhart said that the five stripes respect the challenge of facing the Whitecaps. Um, you know, their wingers are quick, um, dynamic. They're a tough team. They've got a very good goalkeeper, two strong, big center backs. So, um, you know, it's going to be another tough one. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to bring our A game in order to, to get three points. The match starts north of the border at 530 tomorrow. And you can hear all the action right here on 92.9 The Game. And finally, in the NFL, the Kansas City Chiefs announced Friday that they've released wide receiver Jeremy Macklin. The move saves the Chief what will be $10 million in cap space. Now free agent, played in 27 games at the Chief, totaling 131 catches for 1,624 yards and 10 touchdowns. With updates every 20 minutes, I'm Justin Baker from the Kia Studios. On your home of Saturday's Atlanta United match against Vancouver, kick at 530, Sports Radio 92.9 The Game. Atlanta Sports Radio 92.9 The Game. Hey, what's up? It's your midday, guys. Rick and John from 10 to 2. We throw a midday party every day, y'all, and we have the best bits in town. Slice of life from the Bible. Read between the lines. We talk football throughout the year. That's right, Cam. Football all day long. I'll come in here in shoulder pads and a helmet. No hip pads, though, because we're men from 10 to 2. Welcome back to the Doug Stewart Show. Sports Radio 92.9 The Game. Um, Quickly, man, join us on Thursday, June 15th from 7 to 10 p.m. at Studio West off of Ellsworth Industrial Boulevard for a special night of delicious samplings from some of Metro Atlanta's best restaurants. Rhythm and Chews mixes together some of the area's best DJs with live music, Tickets on sale now at www.929thegame.com. Rhythm and Shoes is brought to you by CBS Radio and Camu Cognac. Once again, Rhythm and Shoes is brought to you by CBS Radio and Camu Cognac. That's right, right? All right, there it is. Hey, I want to jump into the entertainment report here in a second. And Waterhead uh, kind of led us into it just now, but... Let's hold off for a second. We got a special guest on the line. Former Georgia Tech quarterback Reggie Ball. I talked him up from the dead. Reggie, what's up, baby? How you doing? Doug, Doug, man, I appreciate the love. I had to call in to say what's up, man, and, and, and show love and support, man. How you doing? Man, I'm doing fantastic. So for people that don't remember, or maybe you just moved to Atlanta, but Reggie Ball was the quarterback for the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. You started like three years, right? Three or maybe four years, right? Come on, Doug. Come on. Come on. From 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 day one, I was that guy. <laughs> From hey, day one, don't do not do that. All right, so I mentioned you a little <laughs> bit earlier. I don't know if you were listening or not, but I mentioned how Calvin Johnson is in all likelihood about to go to the College Football Hall of Fame and how when you guys played, no disrespect to you, bro, but all you had to do was throw it up. I mean, am I lying? Any quarterback that had Calvin, all they had to do was throw it up. <laughs> that's up. true. That's yeah, true. It, it wasn't was just you. Up, down, side, left, right, that's all they had to do. So he made everybody look good. I'm pretty sure Matthew Stapp is feeling it, uh, feeling it you know, uh, even last year uh, uh, with his absence. So 
I mean, just get it in it, get it around him. He'll make you look good. Yeah, man. Uh, what was it like playing with Calvin Johnson? What was it like when you figured out or or found out that he was actually going to come to Georgia Tech and play with you? Did you guys know each other before you decided to go to Tech? He went to Sandy Creek. You went to Stevenson, right? Right, right. Well, you know, being a hometown kid, I did my homework. And we actually had a couple guys that went to Sandy Creek, and they said, hey, you need to go see this guy. Um, he's playing tight end. He, he's going to be a wide receiver. So they didn't really use him as much as they should have at Sandy Creek. But uh, I guess we had some inside information on this big kid who could run and catch. We looked at him. We saw some film. That was the only guy I hosted my entire tenure at Georgia Tech. Wow. And and I'll say I'm one for one, and I'll go ahead and uh, say that one was pretty big. Okay, so so let's back up. So you guys played together um, the most of the time that I remember at Tech. So you were a year ahead. You redshirted a year maybe? No. no okay. True freshman, start from day one. Okay, so yeah, I remember you and, uh, and Calvin, man. That was a dynamic duo. Those were some fun times at Georgia Tech, man. What is, what's going on with Reggie Ball these days? Oh, right now, man, me and my partner, we actually are uh, uh, on to bigger things. We're moving into the next phase with our gym called Effect Fitness. Uh, we're right here, right in um, uh, Atlanta, um, the Pittsburgh area, uh, uh, somewhere where they're doing some uh, changing around, mm-hmm. uh, around the belt line. So uh, we got some big things coming up with the gym, man, uh, training uh, youth and high school athletes. And uh, even I got some guys turning pro uh, as soon as this year. So, man, just just stand with, within the uh, arm's reach of the game. But I do tend to um, uh, cater to all sports now. That's what's up, man. See, I like this. Uh, this happened yesterday as well. We had 9 the Rhino, Chuck Smith, former Atlanta Falcon caller show. So this is what uh-huh. happens on the Doug Stewart show. Uh, uh, ATL right. sports legends just call up. Man, Reggie Ball, I appreciate it, brother. Hey, no problem, man. Had to show love. Big Walt, what's up? I had to shout you out as well, man. There he is, my man Reggie Ball right there, former Georgia Tech quarterback. That's some good stuff. Like yesterday, oh, yeah. Chuck Smith called the show just out of the blue. Then we had Algie Krupple on. Uh, then we get a call from Reggie Ball. So, like, if you a former ATL athlete that we know, uh, call the show. We'll get you on. They rock with you, shout <laughs> They rock with you. All right, let's go ahead and get the entertainment. Let's go ahead and get the entertainment. There we go. There we go. Um, so we talk about birthdays and an entertainment story or two. Celebrating his 27th birthday today, speaking of Alabama earlier, Eddie Lacy turns 27 years of age today, now playing with the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, had that weight clause and those issues with his weight, but it seems like everything is in line, and uh, he's going to play for the Seahawks this year. Celebrating his 45th birthday this year, or today, is Wayne Brady. Is Wayne Brady going to have to choke her? You know the rest. Wayne Brady. I actually like Wayne Brady. And you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. I know there's this thing going, uh, this kind of theme with Wayne Brady that he's corny. Now, he is kind of corny, but Very he's corny, corny funny. Very corny. Wayne Brady is talented. I mean, don't don't trip on Wayne Brady. Wayne Brady can sing. I mean, the man can act. I mean, he can do it all. He a triple threat, Doc. He a triple threat. So Wayne Brady turns 45 years of age today. Um, Beetlejuice. Do you know who Beetlejuice is? Waterhead? Uh, Beetlejuice was a famous, I, well, I ain't gonna call him famous, more infamous, if you will, um, for his interaction on the Howard Stern show. That's right. Yeah. You're exactly right. Yeah. Little, uh, Little I don't want to call him weird. I wouldn't call him weird. I think he has some physical deformities that he might have cashed in on. Yeah. Born Lester Napoleon Green and better known by stage name of Beetlejuice. Uh, frequented Howard Stern before he was famous. He was afflicted from birth with both dwarfism and microphaly. Microcephaly, I believe that term is. When he was a child, his father, who, whose brother was a circus performer, tried to enlist him in the Ringling Brothers sideshow. That's depressing. Like I, I feel and, like I want to cry right now. And the Ringling Brothers is no longer around now. Right. That's another thing, which is sad. Uh, Ringling Brothers, Barnum & Bailey Circus is no more. I think this is their last year. But my man, Beetlejuice, man, uh, real tough life. But he's had a good life, too. Turns 49 years of age today. Happy birthday to him. Andy Cohen, uh, TV producer, host of a couple of those reality little shows or whatever. He turns 49 years old today. Happy birthday to him. And uh, that's pretty much it. I wanted to mention this yesterday. This is a better, uh, just as good a place as any to mention it. But you know who Anya Vinay is, Waterhead, and uh, J-Rock? 
I have no idea. No clue. Do you, you, you don't know either, J-Rock? Ananya yeah. Benye is the winner of the Scripps National Spelling Bee. That's right. Uh, she calmly nailed two words in a row. First was <laughs> gift blar. Yeah. Yeah, she needs some applause. The first word she got right at the very end to win the uh, Scripps Spelling Bee, National Spelling Bee, was gift blar, which is a poisonous perennial shrub of South Africa. Then she got Moroccan. I believe that's the way you pronounce that, which is a type of dress fabric rib crepe that gives her the win in the 90th Scripps National Spelling Bee on Thursday. Congratulations to her. Have y'all ever seen that? It was on ESPN, which is kind of strange that they put a spelling bee on a sports station. I didn't watch it this year because I didn't want to feel dumb. <laughs> I always change the channel. And that's what that's what it does. Yeah. I mean, you said it just now. It makes you feel dumb. That these kids can spell out these huge, gigantic, big words. I remember when I was like in the third grade. Yes, I'm talking about when I was in the third grade. And you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show on Sports Radio 92.9 The Game. I remember when I, was in, uh, when I was in like the third, maybe fourth grade. We had a spelling bee and I won the spelling bee. And the word that I spelled to win the spelling bee was encyclopedia. And I remember my old man got encyclopedia. And you may not even know what an encyclopedia is, Waterhead. Do know what an encyclopedia is. Yeah, you're a little bit I older. actually had an encyclopedia, Doug. You had encyclopedias that came in a group. If you yeah. had one encyclopedia, you was... What? Do you, you got you got the street version. You got the barbershop version. <laughs> <laughs> the bootleg. Well, right, you got the, the bootleg then, version. Then the Britannica is like the high-up, uh, sophisticated... Right, right. That's what I had. So for the Greenhorns <laughs> listening to the show right now that are under the age, I don't know, 30, 25 maybe, encyclopedias was basically our Google. They were a, a group of books that you looked up, you know, items and found out, you know, about things that you looked up or whatever. You know, it was basically, basically pretty much what Google does right now. And so we had some encyclopedias my old man got, uh, which was the greatest thing ever. And encyclopedia was the word that, uh, that I had to spell. And lastly, I just wanted to mention this as well. Have y'all seen what they are saying about this Wonder Woman movie? Dude, uh... My buddy just actually texted me and said it's a must see. Like I have to go see it. Hey, look here, I'm Jack. interested. Look here, Jack. Rotten Tomatoes, which destroys pretty much all movies. The critics and the fans are giving this a rating of ninety three percent. Like, and I use Rotten Tomatoes. I'm a movie guy, so if you're new to the show and you've never heard the Doug Stewart show, if you're if if you know me, I am a movie guy. Like, I see every big blockbuster movie that comes out, every superhero movie that's ever been out. I don't ever remember any movie having this high of ratings on Rotten Tomatoes. They're really, usually they're really critical of movies. This thing got a 93%. I cannot wait to go see this thing. Now, I'm not going to go until Tuesday, until it's $5 Tuesday, but I will go see it. I was going to say, are you saying that like Rotten Tomatoes is almost like the Yelp for movies? Because it's like a culture of hate. But that's true. That's true. I mean, even movies that I thought were pretty good, they don't have good ratings on Rotten Tomatoes. But both the critics, they give two ratings, one from critics and one from fans. From the critics and the fans, they're saying that this movie is sensational. Uh, today is National Rotisserie Chicken Day. I like rotisserie chicken. Today is National Bubba Day. I don't know what that means. Today is National Rocky Road Day. Love me some Rocky Road ice cream. And today is also National Leave the Office Early Day. And <laughs> National Donut Day. Oh, really? I'm going straight to uh, straight to Krispy Kreme after this. Uh, you know what? I was just talking to uh, one of the guys, one of the update guys before we started the show. And you're listening to the Doug Shure Show. And I was mentioning how we used to go to ESPN. And ESPN in Bristol, Connecticut, New England, period. There on every exit, every corner, just like just like there's a Waffle House off of every exit in Georgia, there is a Dunkin' Donuts off of every exit in the New England area, in Connecticut and, and all of those states in that New England area. I can believe that. Oh, my gosh, they loved them some Dunkin' Donuts. I don't get it. I mean, Krispy Kreme, that's how we get down down here. Well, Dunkin' Donuts actually has some pretty good coffee. Let's see, I, I don't drink coffee. It. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. But, but did you, uh, did you uh, check out... Um, uh, Brother Cube, you know, he got some good uh, Ice Cube, I'll say that much. Ice Cube got some uh, good information for us. Well, what's going on with Ice Cube? Yeah, yeah, we're putting together a, a last, it's called Last Friday. <laughs> We're in the preliminary stages of that, me and DJ Pooh. 
you know, writing the script. He helped me write the first one, so we we putting it together. It's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be what everybody expected to be. Wow.